alongside Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth, welcoming you back. And we also want to welcome back uh, who, uh, the folks who stood by so patiently during our break. Uh, first of all, in our Newsmax newsroom in Florida, we've got our friend Javier Manjaris, the managing editor of the Shark Tank blog, and from New York, Ellis Hinnikin. Uh, who uh, weighs in on all matters a little left of center in his role as columnist for Newsday uh, there on Long Island. Uh, gentleman Marco Rubio, we heard from just a second ago, just wrote a letter to the president urging the president not to take unilateral action on immigration. Uh, Rubio goes on to say such moves would, quote, close the door on any chance of making progress on immigration reform in the foreseeable future. Let me go first to you, Ellis Hennigan. Uh Is the president treading on dangerous ground if he decides to uh, basically offer an executive order for amnesty? Well, let me calm your nerves one second, J J.D. Whatever Marco Rubio is saying today, wait a month, he'll be saying something different. He's now been, I think, on about 47 sides of this issue. He was once a big reformer, now he's an anti-reformer. Uh, I'm hoping the president acts. I mean, clearly, Congress, uh, over over almost a decade now, has been incapable of any action on this thing. It's a huge problem that we all agree needs to be resolved. If Congress can't do it, he's the president. He ought to act. Go do something, and then let those uh, Republicans in Congress start yelping about it. And you know what? We'll go fight it out in court. I'd like to see action and reaction instead of paralysis. Wow. Uh, Javier, uh, <laughs> you know Senator Rubio. Uh, is this political damage control in part for the senator since he was part of the Gang of Eight and right. put forth that wrong-headed amnesty bill? Wrong-headed in my opinion. and In my opinion as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Ellis must think that thing was great, but, well, but go ahead. No, well, I'll argue with you guys about that all day. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah I like to go there. But listen, it, it, first of all, it, I agree with Ellis in, in the point that, you know, Marco has been taking the different positions on immigration reform. Look, this could be what Marco Rubio needs. Been, uh, President Obama going unilaterally on immigration reform and pushing his executive orders on this. If he does so, this could be the cover that Marco Rubio was looking for to kind of get past that whole debacle that is his co-sponsoring and uh, support of the Gang of Eight Immigration Reform Bill, which is nothing less than amnesty for illegal immigrants. Look, this could be it. I mean, again, Marco has been backpedaling, as Ellis alluded to, over the past year or so. First, he was for comprehensive reform, a one-size-fits-all bill. Now he's backpedaled and said that he wants more of a piecemeal approach. Now, with the president coming out and, and, and threatening to, uh, to impose executive orders on immigration reform and, and, and pretty much granting amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants, Marco is going to be in the forefront. Again, like the media coined him or the media uh, anointed him as that token Hispanic in the U.S. Senate that is um, as the authority of, on immigration reform, they're going to look to him to, to, be that, uh, to be that voice again this time around. And he's going to get a lot of airplay, a lot of free earned media, and, and I think he's going to take advantage of it and it's going to work in his benefit. Ellis, do you think that we're going to see a government shutdown? Republicans are threatening to do so. Oh boy, it's so fascinating, isn't it, Miranda, the political calculation there. Right? You, you've got nervousness on both sides, right? Dems who are in tough races right now are concerned that some kind of bold action from the president could tip their races against them. So there's pressure from Democrats on the president not to act. And yet there's also a sense, and, and this is, I guess, the side that I'm on, is that Republicans tend to overreact to these things. J.D. knows this from his time in Arizona. You know, Democrats will make a step. The Republicans will have some potential political advantage, but then they'll overplay their hand. They'll shut down the government. They'll start doing crazy stuff, and it'll end up bouncing back to the benefit of the Democrats. So I don't really know where it comes out, but I'll tell you, it's a very, very exciting political calculation, I think. Javier, your thoughts. Right, well, you know, again, I have to agree with <laughs> You're my already ami ready amigo to go. on the left, Ellis. You know, Republicans usually overplay their hand. And and I've said it before, is that if Amer uh, Republicans should stay away from the immigration reform policy. It's one of those divisive wedge issues that always works against them. So, again, if, if it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they play this immigration, especially now if the president does, which I believe he will, uh, go forward with a unilateral action uh, in favor of immigration reform, illegal immigration reform. It's going to be interesting how if they find a balance to counter him and use it to their benefit. Uh, gentlemen, about two and a half minutes left. Let's switch gears and talk now about ISIS. Following the beheading of James Foley, another journalist has his life hanging in the balance, Stephen Sotloff. 
uh, last week in that same video which featured the ISIS fighter who we now believe to be a, a Brit by birth. They mentioned Sola, uh, Sotloff would be next. In fact, they, they brought him out, had him by the collar. In an effort to save her son's life, his mom, Shirley, directly addressed al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, asking him to show mercy on her son. Let's listen to this mom, then I want to get your reaction following the, her plea. Since Stephen's capture, I've learned a lot about Islam. I've learned that Islam teaches that no individual should be held responsible for the sins of others. Stephen has no control over the actions of the U.S. government. He's an innocent journalist. I've always learned that you, the caliph, can grant amnesty. I ask you to please release my child. We can all understand a mother's plea, uh, but Ellis, what are the implications of this? Al-Baghdadi, do you think he'll care a whit for what this, uh, this lady had to say? I mean, he has not shown a lot of uh, emphasis on caring lately. You're absolutely right. Boy, if I were taken hostage, I hope my mom will step forward and deliver some kind of human plea like that. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. I mean, how can, you not, how can you not feel for that lady? Ellis and Javier, real quickly, we only have about a few seconds left. Do you see ISIS as a serious threat? There's been a lot of controversy over this. I know, Ellis, that you said we've learned a lot of lessons following 9-11, but Al-Qaeda is saying they don't even want to have anything to do with it, that they're too violent for them. Listen, I don't think they're too violent for anyone. I think uh, uh, ISIS is where it is now because of the actions of President uh, Barack Obama. Look, we, again, back to what Ellis said, our hearts go out to this mother, but this is effective and it's going to, it could force the Obama administration to once again negotiate with terrorists and endanger even more Americans. What kind of message is, it gonna, is he going to send there if he does so? And Gentlemen, quick, oh, go ahead. But we will have to end it there, unfortunately. Only 20 seconds remain. Just time enough to thank Ellis Hennigan from Newsmax New York and Javier Manjaris from our Newsmax newsroom at our Florida Center. And America's Forum will continue right after this timeout.